Looking for pattern and extending the pattern to solve a problem is a very common strategy in solving many problems. Sometimes a situation can be very complicated when the number involved is big. And let's observe what the result is if the number involved is small. So start from small. What happens when the number is just one, two, and so on, and extend the number until you see a pattern and extend the pattern to solve problems that involve big numbers. Sometimes we can use a table to record our data. So the number involved, let's say, let's begin with one. What result do you get? And what happens if the number involved is two? What result do you get? And so on. And see if we can find a pattern in the result and then use the pattern to solve for the situation when the number involved is big numbers such as 25. Let's look at one example. Six straight lines are drawn on a circle to partition it into regions. What is the maximum number of regions possible? So there are many ways a circle can be partitioned by six straight lines. If we do it randomly, we probably will get something like these. We can have six lines drawn like this. We get 10 regions or like this, 12 regions or like this, 16 regions. But what is the maximum number of regions possible? So no random work. So start from just one line. If you start from one line, you see that by drawing the line on the circle, we partition the circle into two regions. Okay, then let's move on to two lines. Now, when you draw the second line, there are different scenarios that's possible, but we see that the maximum number of regions is four if the second line intersects with the first line. So the first case, no intersection. The second case, if there's intersection, then we have the maximum number of regions. For two lines, it adds two more regions to the original one. Okay, and then let's extend it to three lines and let's do that step by step to see what happens when I introduce the third line. As you see that as line three intersects with line one as this arrow slowly enters line one, intersect with line one, we created one extra partition and when we continue to draw this line, and when this line gets to line two, it also partitions another region out of the original one. As we continue to draw this line, as this line exits the circle, it adds one more region. So for line three, if we keep maximum number of intersection with the lines already exist in the diagram, we will create three more regions. So by this observation, we see that when line three intersects with line one, two, and exit the circle, we create three more regions. And if we extend the pattern by adding the fourth line, we can add four more new regions to the circle. Do you see the pattern? Add one line, create one region. Add the second line, we create two more regions. Add the third one, we create uh, three more new regions. So using this pattern, we don't have to draw all six lines because that's going to be quite messy. But using that region, we see that this is the expression that will tell us how many maximum number of regions can be formed by drawing six straight lines on the circle. Now the first number, this is a special case. This is when there's no line, just one circle out there. We already have one region that is in the original circle. Introducing the first line, then we get one more region when we do the second line, we add two more regions and so on. So the total number of regions can be drawn with six lines on a circle is 22. Okay, let's try this practice on your own. And when you are ready, you can unpause the video. Okay, this problem is about connecting 15 points on a circle and how many lines can be drawn by connecting any two points. Well, this is a big job because, well, I just 
started with one point. Let's say this is point number one. From point one, if I connect to all the other points, because there are a total of 15 points, so from point one, I can create 14 lines by connecting to all the 14 other points. So I have 14 lines added. And then extend to the second one. Now, this is our point one. What if I do the same thing with point two? Let's see what happens. In point two, I also connect to all the other lines. However, we see that point one and point two are already connected. I don't need to connect them again. So if you connect point two to the other points, we only create 13 new lines because we don't repeat the one that's already there that's between line one, uh, point one and point two. So using this pattern, beginning the first one, we added 14, and then we use the second point, we will create 13 more lines, and so on and so on. So if we do point three and connect point three to all the other points without reconnecting to point two and point one, then we will create 12 more lines. Do you see the pattern? We go from 14, 13, and 12, and all the way down. And when you get to the last one, actually when you get to the last one, point number 15, there's nothing that we will create because it's already connected to all the other ones previously. So the pattern goes like this, 14 plus 13, 12, all the way down to one, and this is 105. Let's look at another example. This is also a very common type of problems that's asked in a lot of math contests. What is the ones digit of the product of multiplying 57s? What does that mean? What's this problem about? So we are trying to multiply seven and there are 57s that we want to multiply. And the product is going to be a huge number. But what we want to find out is the ones digit. What is the ones digit? We don't care what the number is, but just the ones digit. How do we do that? Well, don't try to multiply all of them because that is going to be quite impossible by hand or by calculator. Okay, let's do some observation. If I only have one seven, well, seven just by itself is seven. If I multiply two sevens, I get 49. And I want to focus on the ones digit. The ones digit for just one seven is seven. For two sevens is nine. If I multiply three sevens, the ones digit is three. Four sevens, the product with the ones digit being one, and so on, and seven again, and nine again. Now, by doing that, do you see a pattern? Seven, nine, three, one, seven, nine. Again, we seem to be repeating something we have just seen. So the ones digit repeats in a cycle of four, seven, nine, three, one, and then it goes back seven, nine, three, one, and so on and so on. So it keeps repeating. That means for every fourth product, we will have one digit of one. Now multiplying 57s. Well, let's find the product of four that is close to 50, and I think of 48. So if I multiply 48 sevens, that is also a complete cycles of four. And the last digit, the ones digit will end with one. But now I'm multiplying 50 sevens. So let's move two more steps from one. From one, if I move two more steps, this is 49 sevens. This is 50 sevens. So it ends with the number nine. Let's try another one. When you are ready, you can Unpause this video. Okay, what's the remainder when five to the power of 200 is divided by seven? Now, what is this number? We don't know because it's going to be a very scary big number, but let's do some observation. If I only have five to the power of one, let's start with one. Five divided by seven, well, is zero remainder five. What if I have five to the second power. 25 divided by seven is three remainder four. Again, what I care about is the remainder. And you see that, that I highlighted with red. 
and so on and so on. So let's move from one, two, three, and so on to look at each time when I increase the power of five, let's see what the remainder becomes. So I see the remainder is five, four, six, two, three, one, five, four. Oh, it seems like I am repeating again. So the remainder repeats in a cycle of six and it goes five, four, six, two, three, one as shown here. For every sixth power of five, there's a remainder of one when divided by seven. So if I look for five to the 200th power, well, I think of a number that is close to 200 and that is a multiple of six. So I think of 180. If I multiply five to the power of 180, the remainder will be one. And then I move in a block of six, in a group of six. So a couple of groups down, I will be doing five to the power of 198 also has remainder of one. I just need two more power of five to get to answer this problem. So now I'm at one. Remember this is one. So five to the power of 199 will have a remainder of five and five to the power of 200 will have a remainder of four. Here's some homework. And when you are ready, you can unpause the screen to move on to the next one to see what the answers are. So here are the solutions. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. Stay tuned for more. Thank you. Bye-bye.